Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Your complete commencement exercises for the Hampton Days High School class of 2005. My name is Rich Berger, and I've been graciously asked to act as your opening host for the procession that is soon to enter the tent, marking the beginning of our proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, as we approach, uh, approach the hour of 11 o'clock on this glorious day, please note that our processional is beginning to assemble at the entrance to the middle school gymnasium. Leading the processional will be the soon-to-be graduates of Hampton Bays High School. With the girls forming on the right and the boys on the left, they will march to the entrance of the tent and then turn to the center line, acting as an honor guard for our distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, may I direct your attention to the entrance of the tent and introduce you to Joanne Lowenthal, Superintendent of Schools, and Nick Dino, Secondary School Principal and Master of Ceremonies. <laughs> Next up, we have George Lee, President of the Board of Education, and Fred Thiel, esteemed member of the New York State Assembly. Next, we have Jen Boyer, Vice President of the Board of Education, and Marie Mulcahy, Board of Education Trustee. Please don't stand where you're coming. We are also very proud to welcome Chris Katz and Craig Tefano, Board of Education Trustees. <laughs> Representing the District Administration, please welcome Dr. Victoria Sigmund, Director of Instructional Services, and Drew Walker, Director of Athletics. Next, we have Joe Kalar, Director of Pupil Personnel Services, and Sandy Albano, Assistant Superintendent. <laughs> Representing our elementary school, please welcome Mark Meyer, Elementary Principal. And now, representing our elementary school faculty, we have Denise Romano, Dean of Students, and Pat McCormick, HPTA President and AIS Instructional Teacher. <laughs> Next, Mary Beth Moat and Judy Eaton, Kindergarten Teachers. <laughs> Next up, Rosemary King and Dennis, Denise DeRosa, Grade 4 Teachers. Representing our secondary school, Linda Anthony, assistant principal, and Frank Vetro, assistant principal. <laughs> now, our esteemed members of our secondary school faculty, Jen Halsey, instrumental music. <laughs> art, art department representatives, Lori Ackerson and Regina Papillo. Guidance Department Representatives, Jonathan Nelson and Anthony de Blasio. <laughs> English Department Representatives, Kathleen Callahan and Mary Alice Griffith. <laughs> Language Department Representatives, Carol Gerards, Ruth Gerowski and Jacqueline Nazi. Representing the Special Education Department, Michael Ostreicher and Millie Molina. <laughs> Mathematics Department Representatives, Chairperson Eileen Price and Andrew Fotopoulos and Doug Metz. <laughs> Physical Education Department Representatives, Richard Eckhart and Jean Poland and Corinne Ovec. The Secondary School Science Department, Richard Gossett, Chairperson, Tony Daciano Catina, and Richard Ionelli, and Mr. Ed Bauman. <laughs> and representing the Social Studies Department, Francis Stefanik, Chairperson, and Roger Armstrong. and advisors to the class of 2005, Marie Dougherty and Justin Dolphin, English teachers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to honor America in the class of 2005, 
please welcome the Hand Aldrich Post number 94 of the American Legion as they come forward with the presentation of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to present to you the class of 2005 who will march into the tent the familiar refrain of pomp and circumstance performed by our own Hank and Day's high school band. Allegiance to the flag 
of the United States of America and the Jew Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now I'd like to point you towards the Brookville High School Band under the direction of Jennifer Halsey while they play our national anthem. Oh, Thank you, American Legion, and thank you, Mrs. Hawson. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, let me take a moment and introduce you to the men and women seated behind me. First, our distinguished guest, New York State Assemblyman, Fred Thiel. <laughs> this is Joanne Lowenthal, our Superintendent of Schools. <laughs> Members of the Board of Education, Board President George Lehman. <laughs> Vice President Jen Boyer. <laughs> Trustee Chris Katz, Marie Mulcahy, and Craig Stefano. Members of the School District's Administration, Dr. Vicki Sigmund, Director of Instructional Services. <laughs> Joe Calera, Director of Pupil Personnel Services. <laughs> Drew Walker, Director of Athletics. <laughs> Sandy Atlanta, Assistant to the Superintendent. <laughs> Mark Meyer, Elementary School Principal. Linda Anthony and Frank Vetro, High School Assistant Principals. Also seated on the risers are members of the faculty from our elementary and our secondary schools. These teachers have influenced the learning lives of the graduation candidates since kindergarten, and we are very appreciative of their presence here today. And now allow me to do a little housekeeping before we continue. Our program booklet contains a detailed explanation of our awards and scholarships that were presented last evening. Refreshments are available at the hospitality table graciously provided by the PTSA. The, the table is located in the back of the tent. They're also behind the dais. They're also on bottles of water, those of you who might need it during the ceremony. It is also appropriate that we begin this ceremony by acknowledging some of the people who have made this day possible for us. We owe a debt of gratitude to our community and its elected members of the Board of Education who have given up their time, energy, and talents to set the direction for our graduates and the staff. The confidence and caring of our professional staff has assured the success of our graduates. I would also like to especially thank all of the scholarship sponsors for their generosity and for their continued support of our students' commitments to academic excellence. My personal thanks goes to our superintendent, Mrs. Lowenthal, and to my assistant principals, Frank Vetro and Linda Anthony, who have helped us tremendously throughout this past year. 
A uh, very special thanks also goes to my secretary, Mrs. Grace McGuire, and the entire clerical staff who have spent many hours the last few weeks preparing for this morning's event. On behalf of the class, I would like to thank our counselors, our faculty, and staff members who are in attendance here today to help honor this special class, the class of 2005, and to their class advisors, Mr. Dougherty and Mr. Dolphon, who have worked with this class throughout the past four years. Most of all, I would like to take thank you, the parents and the family of our graduates. I recognize the amount of love, understanding, time, and energy that went into getting these graduates to where they are today. Thank you, parents. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to Patrick Becker. As president of the class of 2005, Patrick will make some welcoming remarks to his classmates. Patrick. Good morning. I'd like to thank you all for coming today. For the past few weeks, I've been trying to think of how to sum up this year in a few words. No, I had no clue until, uh, until prom night, when I saw everyone in our class finally joining together in hands, smiling and dancing. If anyone ever wanted to know what the class of 2005 was like, since we never won anything, there was never a event we actually excelled in except tug of war, and they'd have to look for the pictures of prom night, which really showed us coming together. I'd like, thank, I'd like to thank all of you for the great memories, and I wish you the best. Thank you, Patrick. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to the Hampton Bay Secondary School Salutatorian, Ms. Samantha Schneer. <laughs> Samantha is graduating with a grade point average of 103.43. Samantha will be attending the Tufts University in the fall. Good morning, everyone. Amazing work, appropriately. Salutations. As with most tasks involving deadlines, I must confess that I left the preparation for this speech right up until the last minute. And maybe I'm just making excuses. But I really think that I left it to the last minute because I wasn't ready to write it. I wasn't ready for this amazing chapter in my life to end. For me, as I surmise for many of you, this day has come much faster than I could have ever imagined. When most of us think of graduation, we think of ending one phase of our lives and commencing another. We think of change, which is why I can't, cannot help but think of the French saying, Who ça change, who ça la même chose, which translates to the more things change, the more they remain the same. I remember what seemed like yesterday, anticipating my first day in the high school and being terrified of new situations, having changed classes several times a day, having many teachers instead of just one, having to cope, or maybe not cope, with real homework, and going to school every day with a bunch of kids who are much older than I was. Now that I am one of those older kids preparing for my first year of college, I'm having the same anxieties. We saw Sean, we saw a men show. I'm anxious about living away from home, having many more academic responsibilities, interacting with new people in different places, but most of all, having to do it all on my own. No more mother to cradle my head and tell me it'll be okay when things seem bleak. No more father, always at hand to offer a practical solution to a problem. And sometimes he saw it help solve it himself. But just as we face the fears that we had as seventh graders entering this high school, I'm confident that we will meet the challenges which face us now as we go off to college, the military, or the workforce. And I know that we will become better people for having overcome them. During these high school years, our individualism truly began to blossom. And we got started on the road of exploring who we will be as adults. We made many mistakes, and sometimes we even learned our lessons. As much as our experiences in school, it is this town of Hampton Bays and our experiences with the people we've grown up with that have shaped us into the young adults we are today. There have been many obstacles, some of which we have overcome individually, some of the class, and some of the generation. But being here today is proof that we have met those challenges and we have overcome those obstacles. And I sincerely hope that as we part ways and travel on our separate paths, we will continue to do the same. Although Hampton Bay is a small town, I have come to find that you, my classmates, and my neighbors have very large hearts. My parents moved our family here from Manhattan in part so that I could have a safe and enjoyable childhood. 
Although it's something, although it's something that I rarely do, I'd like to admit that they were right. <laughs> the residents of this town have a wonderful sense of community, and time and time again, I've seen firsthand that when unfortunate events have befallen someone in this community, our friends and neighbors were quick to rally together and offer help. This generosity is a life lesson that I've learned not so much from being in high school here, but just from growing up in Hampton Bay. In one of my college application essays, I described the vistas driving over the Conquad Bridge, with the sun shimmering off the two sandbanks flanking it, and the ocean waves breaking off the offshore bar, throwing up spume like white ruffles on a sea green dress. I described the beach rock on top of dunes, fighting to stay upright in a strong breeze, and what a calming, influence inspiring view that is. I mentioned the time-worn fishing fleet at the end of June Road and how it is full of Christine Noels and Terry Sue. And I talked about the families who have lived in Hampton Bays for over 300 years with surnames that have become ubiquitous in these parts. And most importantly, I noted that there is a sense of enduring here that one does not find in a large city. Now there were at least one or two very jealous admission directors who after reading my essay wished they could live here in one of the most beautiful places on the planet. I know that our high school experience has sharpened our appreciation for that natural bounty, as well as for the unparalleled sense of community that characterizes Hampton Bay. Of course, it doesn't hurt that the Hamptons have been designated as one of the most popular summer vacation spots in the world, so I know that lots of us will be coming back to Hampton Bay for many a summer to come. In other words, and in closing, I think I speak for all of my classmates when I say to our parents, don't rent out our rooms just yet. We'll be back. Thank you. I would now like to introduce you to our valedictorian of the class of 2005, Haley Curtis. Haley. Haley has graduated with a grade point average of 105.164. Haley will be attending Connecticut College in the fall. Haley? Good morning and welcome. When Mr. Dial told me that my speech was to be about the future, I immediately started racking my mind for ideas. I wanted to be new and original, not at all cliche. At the same time, I was wondering, who am I to give advice on the future when I don't even know what I'm majoring in next year? I'm just as unsure as the rest of my classmates as to what the future holds for me. Besides this, I have always personally believed that while advice can be useful, it is better for a person to go out and experience life on their own. Therefore, still stuck for an idea, I went to others for help. However, my mom felt my speech should be at least 10 minutes long, and all my friends felt I should write the speech about them. <laughs> Clearly, I was going to have to come up with the idea on my own. Through all this, I came to realize that maybe the reason I dreaded writing the speech so much is because I feared the future. However, now as we all prepare to move on with our lives, this fear is replaced with hope, and the knowledge that these people I've grown up with can make it through whatever challenges the future brings. When we entered our freshman year, we could not predict the changes the world was about to face. Within our first few high school days came the events of September 11th, and our world was forever altered. Indeed, every person and nation has been forced to adapt themselves to these developments. Over the past four years of our high school careers, we have moved from a time of peace to a time of war. No matter what your position or opinion on our nation's leadership or the state of the globe, the changing world has become our responsibility as the graduates of 2005. We must accept this responsibility and do it as best to move our society forward on the correct path. Some of us will lead from the front lines, while others of us will stay in the background. Regardless of how you do it, it is a necessity that we do what is right and just. We are no longer responsible for just ourselves, but for everyone. Our decisions and choices affect not only us, as we may have thought in high school, but those around us. It is impossible to live a disconnected life in times like ours. 
It is vital to be aware of your surroundings and take part in society. You must look at the human race as a whole, not as one culture nation, but as an entire world. All of our actions must be an effort to make things better for everyone. That is the only way we can end the problems we face today and move on for an improved future. In doing this, however, it is also important to always reach for your own goals and dreams. Do not take the easy way out as appealing as it may seem. Always push yourself to your fullest extent and you will reap the most benefits. We don't follow. Stay true to only your own convictions, no one else's. I think that is what much of the youth is lacking these days, the courage to stand up for your beliefs. We cannot be afraid to stand up and fight against what we think is wrong. I believe the only way to happiness is to stand up for what you believe is right, no matter what the cost. Always reach for the best. Don't let anyone tell you these are the best times in your life, whether it be about high school, college, or any other time. Instead, always keep in mind that the best is yet to come. That way you reach for the highest in whatever you do. Things are going to get harder. That's life. But just because they're harder doesn't mean they're getting worse. As times change, our actions must also change. We must adapt to our world and do our utmost in reaching our goals, even if it is the most difficult course. Don't give up and don't dwell on the past. Instead, take every experience, good and bad, and learn from it. Learn from everything you do. Take what you've done in high school and use it. The lessons we've learned in Hampton Bays, both in school and out, will stay with us forever. It is these experiences we've had together that make me confident in our success in the future. Although you will change, you will always be the same person at heart. I hope that when I come across all of you in the future, you have all kept those little things that make you who you are. I hope Kathy is as obsessed with compulsive as ever. <laughs> I hope Espo is still one of the funniest people I'll ever meet. I hope you can still hear Ashley's laugh from a mile away. I hope Marissa is always one of the most well-read people I'll ever meet. I hope Corey can still climb up and jump off any building. <laughs> and I hope that we all remember what we've learned in HB and use it to help us become better people in the future. It is my experiences with all of you that give me hope for the future. If you stay true to yourself and your convictions, you will succeed in whatever you do. I think this is the point where I'm supposed to wish the class of 2005 good luck, but I don't think a class that can complete their homecoming hallway in two hours every year really needs luck. <laughs> Instead, I want to give my thanks. Thank you for making me the person I am. Thank you for giving me the confidence that our future will be a better place because of our contributions. Thank you for giving me the knowledge that at my core, I will always be the person I was in Hampton Days. Thank you all, parents, teachers, administrators, and most importantly, my fellow classmates, for everything you have taught me. Congratulations, class of 2005. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to introduce you to our superintendent of schools, Mrs. Joanne Longhorn. Sam and Haley, that was wonderful. And I'm sure your classmates were as proud of your comments as I know your teachers and family members are. Good morning. Good morning, members of the Board of Education, Assemblyman Field, administrators, honored faculty, staff, family, and friends. And you, members of the class of 2005, well, here we are, gathered under this big top, and you are at center stage, as it should be. Your experiences in getting here are varied. There was laughter, and there were tears. There were a lot of A's, as well as B's, and probably some C's and D's, too. There were awards, and there was the dreaded visit to the vice principal or the principal's office, or even the superintendent's hearing. But all of that is over. Your learning life in Hampton Bays is drawing to a close. And here we are. High school graduation ceremonies are not about caps or the gowns that you're wearing. They're not about the tassels and which way to wear it, or the colorful traditions that represent the areas of study of the people sitting up here. They are about pomp and circumstance. Our ceremony 
as Haley and Sam commented, is about the future and the past. Our ceremony is about each one of you, about your success in the educational system that we provide to you in Hampton Days. Think about it. You are sitting among people that you've gone to school with almost all of your life, and together you received a strong foundation in education. You also learned to swim safely in the ocean, to play team sports, to sing in musicals, to perform in plays, to design yearbooks and newspapers, and to participate in scores of other growing up activities. But most importantly, you began to form some insight about who you are and what direction you will take in life. Your personal direction may take you away from Hampton Days and the wonderful friendships that you are celebrating today. You will live amid both joys and tears. And please know that it is not goodbye, but rather good luck and Godspeed. Mark Twain once wondered out loud why youth was wasted on the young. There is not an adult under this big tent that wouldn't love to mix his or her own wisdom with some of your youth. What you do with your youth, with the education you take away from Hampton Days on to college or to a job or to the military, that will begin to develop your own personal wisdom. Therefore, use your gift of youth wisely. Mix it with your education, your energy, and your optimism, and you will continue to succeed in life. Your teachers here before you, your townsfolk represented by the Board of Education members, your parents, grandparents, and friends have all worked hard for this day, and so you have too. Together we have formed a unique community that gathers here now to wish you well. Some of you will spread out far and wide, and some of you will stay right here in your own backyard. Whatever you do, do it with pride, with a sense of mission, and do it well. We send you off with our love, with our best wishes, and with our goodwill. We're also able to send you off with some final words from someone special to you as a class and to all of us who reside on the east end of Long Island. During the past year, I had the opportunity to observe this elected official interact with members of the class of 2005. Assemblyman Fred Seal visited with you in one of Mr. Armstrong's programs called Pizza and Politics. At that time, I noted his ability to focus on student questions, provide direct answers, and relate easily to all of you. Sometimes that's not easy for adults to do. He also won my heart that day when he summarized his session with you saying, Joanne, your students asked excellent questions and stayed actively involved in the discussions. They were terrific, we know that. The class's second interaction with Assemblyman Thiel was in April when he visited Mr. Armstrong's classrooms, providing continued interaction and exchange of ideas. Fred kept student interest and provided a super learning experience for everyone that day. Assemblyman Thiel was born in Sac Harbor and graduated from Pearson High School, which we're not going to hold against him today. Before attending Cornell, I'm sorry, yeah, he graduated from Pearson before attending Cornell University, Southampton College, and Albany Law School. He began his career in government in 1975 while he was still in college. He was selected to participate in the New York State Assembly intern program, and the rest is history. Assemblyman Seal is aggressively involved in environmental and transportation issues. He pushes for governmental reform and fiscal responsibility at all levels of government. Recently, he sponsored legislation on affordable housing, and most recently, he has been fighting, along with Senator Lavelle, to improve the school tax situation for everyone here in Hampton Bays. I received some insight this week on the life of our representative. I made phone calls that were answered any time of day or night. I received personal calls from Fred while he was on the floor of the assembly. He successfully provided advice and direction to Hampton Bays, and we are enormously grateful. Right now, he is here to offer advice and hopefully direction to our graduates, the class of 2005. Please join me in giving a huge Hampton Bays welcome to our honored guest and speaker,
you know, once Mark Twain had to introduce somebody uh, that he had never met before, and what he said to the crowd was, I only know two things about the speaker. Number one, he's never been in jail. And second, I don't know why. So uh, I really appreciate that, uh, that uh, introduction. It's one of the nicest ones I've ever had, Joanne. And I want to thank the administration here uh, and the school board and the class of 2005 for inviting me to participate in this commencement uh, ceremony here today. Now, in a sensible world, I would now congratulate the class of 2005 and sit down without any further comment. I'm sure the class of 2005 wishes I would do so. <laughs> Unfortunately for the class of 2005, we do not live in a sensible world. We live in a world far more slavish in its obedience to ancient custom than we like to admit. An ancient commencement day custom demanded that somebody stand up here and harangue the poor graduates until they begged for mercy. <laughs> the ancient rule has been, make them suffer. I still remember my high school graduation at Pearson High School in Sag Harbor 34 years ago. They had imported some heat and humidity from the African rainforest, especially for the occasion, and the commencement speaker spoke for about two and a half days. Now luckily, the forces of mercy have made big gains since then. The administration at Hampton Bay High School has suggested that for me to speak longer than 20 minutes would be regarded as cruel and inhuman punishment, and that if I go on as long as 30 minutes, several members of the varsity football team will mount this stage and forcibly remove me. But if I can finish in 10 minutes, 10 minutes, they'll buy me lunch next week. <laughs> they know they're man, ladies and gentlemen. When I smell a free lunch, I go for it. So if I can do this right, you will see my back before we get to minute 11. This will not be easy. Condensing a graduation speech into 10 minutes is like trying to squeeze the United States Army into a phone booth. To do this, I had to strip away all the thrills. This means you don't even get any warm-up jokes. So those of you who came just for the jokes might as well leave now. In order to keep my speech less than 10 minutes, there will also be no politics either. Some commencement speakers actually think graduation is about them, that this is an opportunity to inflict their personal political views about the issues of the day on a captive audience and maybe make a few headlines. They miss the most fundamental point about graduation. It's about the graduates, not the commencement speaker. So rest assured, there will be no political opinions offered here today. My comprehensive search of commencement speeches revealed that most of them focus on a few basic themes about the meaning of life, the future, or making the world a better place. I do not intend to wander far from that tradition, so at the outset, let me confess that I have borrowed ideas here and there from speeches that I found particularly interesting or articulate. In the end, though, I hope that my words today reflect a view about life based upon my own experience that you'll find helpful and maybe even a little interesting. As I look at all of you today, I cannot help but see myself 34 years ago. As I think about it, I have as much in common with that young man at Pearson High School as I do with any stranger I might pass on the street. I cannot remember what I wore or how I felt that day, but I can tell you this without question. I want it to be perfect. Let me explain what I mean by that. I mean that I got up every day and tried to be perfect in every way. If there was a history test, I studied. If there was a paper to be written, it was done. I smiled at everyone because it was important to be friendly. I played varsity sports, I was the class president, and I was in the school play. And if anyone had ever stopped me and asked me why I did all those things, I'm not sure what I would have said then, but I can tell you today that I did them because I wanted to be perfect, perfect in every possible way. Trying to be perfect was hard work. What it took to be perfect was always changing. It became harder and harder to be perfect because as I realized that a fresh, as a freshman at Cornell University, I was not the smartest guy in the world. Eventually, trying to be perfect day after day, year after year, became like carrying a backpack filled with bricks. How I secretly wished to lay my burden down. If this sounds familiar to you in any way, if you've been trying to be perfect in one way or another, then make today, when for a moment there are no more grades to get, no more classmates to meet, or terrain to be scouted, make today the day to put down the backpack. Trying to be perfect may seem inevitable for you. You're smart and ambitious and interested in the world and its good opinion. However, on one level, it's too hard, and on another level, it's too cheap and easy. It really requires you to constantly read what the world expects from you 
and to assume the mask necessary to be the best whatever the world dictates or requires. Those requirements are constantly changing, but when you're clever, you can read them and do the imitation required. But nothing important or meaningful or beautiful or interesting or great ever came out of imitations. The thing that is really hard and really amazing is giving up on being perfect and beginning the work of becoming yourself. This is more difficult because there's no template to follow or mask to wear. Set aside what your friends expect, what your parents demand. Set aside the messages the culture sends through its advertising, entertainment, its disdain and its approval about how you should behave. Begin with the most terrifying thing of all, a clean slate. Then look every day at the choices you're making and ask yourself, why are you making them? And then hopefully the answer will be, for yourself. These choices are who and what you are and what you mean to be. This is the hard work of your life in the world, to make it all up as you go along, to acknowledge the introvert, the clown, the artist, the distraught, the goofball, the thinker. You will have to bend all of your will not to march to the music that all of those great days out there pipe on their flutes. They want you to go to professional school, to wear khakis, to pierce your navel or bare your soul. These are the fashionable ways. The music is tinny if you listen close enough. Instead, look inside. There lies the melody spun out by your own heart. This is a symphony. All the rest are just jingles. This will always be your struggle, whether you're 18 or 51. When I used my law degree for public service rather than a lucrative private law practice, some people said I was nuts. When I put my career in government on the line to run for office as an independent many years ago, some said I was nuts again. I'm not nuts. Well, at least I don't think I'm nuts. But I'm happy and successful on my own terms, because if your success is not on your own terms, if it looks good to the world, it does not feel good in your heart, it is not success at all. Remember the words of Lily Tomlin. Even if you win the rat race, you're still a rat. <laughs> Look at your fingers. Hold them in front of your face. Each one is crowned by an abstract design that is completely different from those of anyone in this crowd, in this country, and in the world. They are a metaphor for you. Each of you is as different as your fingerprints. Why in the world should you mar march to any lockstep? The lockstep is easier, but here is why you cannot march to it. Because nothing great or good ever came from it. Imitations are redundant. Yourself is what is wanted. You already know this. I just need to remind you. Think back, think back to first or second grade when you could still hear the sound of your own voice in your head, when you were too young and unformed to understand what you were supposed to take on, that you were supposed to take on the expectations of those around you. It has been said that many a man who has known himself at 10 forgets himself utterly between 10 and 30. Many a woman, too. You are not alone in this. We parents have forgotten our, have forgotten our ways sometimes, too. I say this as the deeply committed, often flawed father of three. When you, you were first born, each of you, our great glory was in thinking you absolutely distinct from every baby who had ever been born before. You were a miracle of singularity, and we knew it with every fiber of our being. But we are only human, and being a parent is a very difficult job. More difficult than any other, because it requires the shaping of other people. Over the years, we learned to want for you things that you did not want for yourself. We learned to want to lead in the play, the acceptance to the Ivy League college, the star of the baseball team, the straight and narrow path that often leads absolutely nowhere. Sometimes we wanted those things because we were convinced it would make life better, or at least easier for you. Sometimes we had a hard time distinguishing where, where you ended and where we began. And that's another reason to give up on being per perfect and take a hold of being yourself. Sometimes in the distant future, you may want to be parents too. If you can bring your children the self that you truly are, as opposed to some amalgam of manners and mannerisms, expectations and fears that you have, acquired, that you have acquired along the way, you will give them a great gift. You will teach them by example, not to be terrorized by the narrow expectations of the world, a world that often demands that you color within the lines when a spray of paint or the scroll of a crayon is what is truly wanted. Remember yourself from the days when you were younger, rougher, and wilder, more scrawled and straight line. Remember all of yourself, the flaws and the faults, as well as your many strengths. Most commencement speeches suggest that you take up something or other, the challenge of the future, 
a vision of the 21st century. Instead, I'd like you to give up. Give up the bricks and the backpack. Give up the punishing quest to be perfect that dogs too many of us through too much of our lives. It's a quest that causes us to doubt our true selves, and that is bad enough. But this is worse, that someday, sometime, you'll be somewhere, maybe on a day like today, on a dune overlooking the ocean, or the peak of a mountain, maybe something bad will have happened. You'll have lost someone you love, or failed at something you wanted to succeed at very much. Sitting there, you will fall into the center of yourself, and you will look through the core of your being to sustain you. If you have been trying to be perfect all your life, and have managed to meet all the expectations of society, chances are excellent that there will be a black hole where your core ought to be. Don't take that chance. Say no to the Greek chorus that thinks it knows the parameters of a happy life, when all it knows is the commonality of the human experience. Listen to that small voice inside you that tells you to go another way. Robert Frost once wrote, two, word, two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. It's never too late to be your best self, and it's never too early either. And when it comes to being your best self, I think that Mother Teresa had it about right when she wrote, people are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest anyway. What you spend years building, someone can destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good that you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give the world the best you've got anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it's between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. Now, it seems that I've run past my 10 minutes, and I'll have to buy my own lunch. And uh, that's my final piece of advice, class of 2005. There is no free lunch. Thank you. Thank you for our proceedings, and we appreciate your willingness to be here for our students and the Hampton Bay's community. As a token of our appreciation, please accept this plaque as a memory of our 2005 commencement exercises. The plaque reads, with gratitude and appreciation to State Assemblyman Fred W. Thiel Jr. as commencement speaker, Hampton Bay's Union School, Union Free School District, Hampton Bay's New York. I would like to share some facts with you about the class of 2005. There are 104 graduates in the class of 2005, 54 women and 50 men. 18 are members of the National Honor Society. 32 have received New York State Advanced Regents Diplomas. Nine have received Advanced Regents Diplomas with honors. Six of our graduates will be going on to the workforce. Two of our graduates will be joining military services. 92 members of this class have applied for admission and have been accepted at two-year and four-year university and colleges. 92 members equals 89 percent. Sixty-five members of this class, or 63 percent, have been involved in college-level courses in English, Calculus, American History, and Physics. That's another amazing statistic. Fourteen of our graduates attended vocational programs at, at War Technical Center, Brookhaven and Islip Technical Centers, and Suffolk Aviation Academy at Center at Brookhaven. Eleven of our varsity athletic teams, for a total of 121 athletes, received New York State recognition as scholar athlete teams. To be eligible for, to be eligible for this award, the entire team must have a cumulative quarterly average of better than 90%. So 11 teams earned that distinctive award. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Hampton Bay's class of 2005.
graduates, last night we celebrated your academic accomplishments at our Senior Night Scholarship and Award Ceremony. The theme of the evening was dreams. Local benefactors awarded you over $40,000 to assist you in the process of realizing your own dreams. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Through the generosity demonstrated last evening by the Hampton-based community, it is clear that the community believes in you, your future, and your dreams. The poet Arthur William O'Shaughnessy wrote the following, which is so fitting for you, the class of 2005. We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. Wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams, we are the movers and shakers of the world forever, it seems. One man with a dream, at pleasure, shall go forth and conquer a crown, and three with the new song's measure can trample an empire down. For each age is a dream that is dying, or one that is coming to birth. Dreams are the foundations of all great achievements. We dream for ourselves, and we dream for each other. We dream of what is and what will be. And if we are lucky, we experience the fortune of living our dreams. But it takes more than luck to see our dreams come to fruition. For what we see in our minds is not always easily translated into reality. We need to believe. We need to be inspired. We need to have the dedication and the fortitude necessary to see our dreams through. There is a want for the future to be brighter than the past. There is a want for tomorrow to be better than today. There is a want for the unfulfilled dreams of a generation to be realized. And that is why dreams are passed down through generations. Dreams are the torch that lights the way to tomorrow. And as the next generation of dreamers, you, class of 2005, are the keepers of that torch. It is your responsibility to feed its flame with your desire. Graduates, it's your turn to dream the dreams that have never been dreamt. It's your turn to dream until those dreams come true. You have proven you have what it takes. Capture and embrace those dreams. Your capabilities are endless. Your possibilities are limitless. limitless. Be the dream. Shoot for the stars. If you miss, you'll land among the clouds. Class of 2005, welcome to your dream. Make it magic. At this time, it is my pleasure to call upon our superintendent of schools, Joanne Lowenthal, and Board of Education President George Lehman to begin the wording of diplomas. I do want to explain what's going to happen over the next few minutes. This is a legal process that's happening right now, and it certifies that you are indeed eligible to receive your diplomas and graduate from Hampton Bays. The Board of Education is the presiding body of this event, and that's why they led you into the tent today. The faculty gathered up here in their educational regalia are the official witnesses for the conferring of your high school diploma. It rests with the Board of Education legally to assure to the community that you students have achieved a certain academic standard. So all of you gathered here today have met the state standards set by New York State Board of Regents and the Department of Education. It is then the responsibility of the principal, Principal Dino, and the superintendent to assure the board members that every one of you have met the necessary credits, grades, and study sequences for your graduation. Mr. Dino and I will now officially do that, and Mr. Lehman will join us. The rest of the board members will form a line of honor after you get your diplomas, but I ask them now to stand also to validate you. At this time, it is both an honor and a privilege to present the class of 2005 to, the, to our superintendent of schools, Ms. Joanne Lowenthal, and to declare that these candidates meet all the necessary requirements for their high school diplomas. As superintendent of schools, and with pride in the achievements, success, and obvious potential of each of our Hampton Bay's seniors, it is my privilege to certify to the President and to the entire Board of Education the eligibility of these candidates present, the class of 2005, for their high school diplomas. By the power vested in me as President of the Board of Education, I am honored to declare that the candidates for the President are eligible to receive their high school diplomas in the state of New York in the Hampton Bay's Union Free School District and are entitled to all the privileges pursuant to today's 
now we're going to start. Ladies and gentlemen, Kaylee Curtis. Samantha Schneer. Patrick Becker, Suffolk County Community Amanda Cooper, the Catholic University of America. Jose Aguero, Costa Rica University. Alexandria Adamowitz, Suffolk County Community College. Derek Andrews, University of Vermont. <laughs> Laura Namashevitz, Boston University. <laughs> Lucas Bennett, United States Army. Maria Barkley, Sunni Delhi. Edwin Blakaj, Suffolk County Community College. Yasinia Bettencourt, Suffolk County Community College. Cory Borgard, Sunny Dollar. <laughs> Jack and Boganum, Wagner Dollar. <laughs> Jason Casiano, Sunny Dupont. Melinda Burrell, Suffolk <laughs> Kathy Voter, Penn State University. <laughs> Kyle Coyle, Full Sail Real World Education. Pamela Camacho, Suffolk County Community College. Adam Danowitz, Rollins College. Melanie Cancella, University of Rhode Island. John Erickson, St. John's University. <laughs> Christine Carabella, Adrian Cardi, Suffolk County Community College. 
Stephen Fugari, University of Central Florida. Gloria Castro, Suffolk County Community College. Andres Flores, Suffolk County Community College. Brittany Collins. Scott Frankenbach, Suffolk County Community College. Courtney Connolly, Sunny Oniata. Christopher Fraser, University of Rhode Island. Natalia Correa, Suffolk County Community College. Lee Gage, Suffolk County Community College. Nicole Godowski, Penn State University. I'll see you after one, Drexel University. Juan Geraldo, Suffolk County Community College. Lisa Farnsworth. Lisa Foley, technical broadcasting Ryan Griffiths, Suffolk County Community College. <laughs> Megan, po Megan Fox, CW Post of Long Island University. Thank you. 
Manhattan College. Brian Leota, Jacksonville University. Jessica Lagrua, Suffolk County Community College. Nicholas Muse, Suffolk County Community College. Linda Lipanzio, William Murphy, Canisius College. Marissa Lipanzio, Gregory Nelson, Methodist College. Lawrence, Kent State University. Craig McNezulaw, Suffolk County Community College. Anna Lehman, Suffolk County Community College. Wilbur Cucino, United States Coast Guard. Edwin Perez, New York Institute of Technology. Erica Martinez, South Dakota Community College. Ryan Parker, United States National Guard. Michelle Mercurio, the Black Eyed Peas. Reyes, Suffolk County Community College. Joseph Ruggiero, St. Joseph's College. Kathleen O'Rourke, Dowling College. Christian Stroller, the Body Institute of Philadelphia. Kayla Ochoa, New York Restaurant School, the Art Institute. Anna 
Thank you. 